I am back in my homeland, Italy. And this year, I'm exploring the Mediterranean coast from the glittering elegance of its clifftop towns to its mountainous, rustic villages. I think I was born to be a cowboy and rugged wild islands, traveling dramatic coastal roads and across the sea to reveal the best kept secrets of this coast. This is just incredible. And of course, serving up mouth-watering authentic food. I thank you because I never tried this and this is delicious. That's it. From the ancient island of Elba to the southern tip of the boots. Welcome to my Italian coastal escape. I'm exploring the places that I think reveal the best of the Italian West Coast and its cuisine. From the Tuscan coast in the north, the middle stretch studded with show-stopping Sorrento and Capri, right down to the southern tip of the Boot and the Aeolian Islands. And tonight I'm kicking off on the famous Amalfi Coast. I'll experience both the glamour as well as revealing its hidden side. Often voted in the top 10 destination to visit in Italy, the Amalfi Coast is 37 km stretch of iconic coastline made up of many picturesque towns. I'm stopping at three of my favorites, Cetara, Minori, and of course, the picture postcard, Positano. The seaside town is characterized by its pretty meandering streets that lead down to the beach. The pastel houses that hug the cliffs and for being the most photogenic town in all of Italy. My companion is local guide Lisa, who has been showing tourists around this iconic town for over 30 years meaning she's perfectly placed to introduce me to its signature pastime, taking in the view while having a classic Amalfi Coast spritz. Grazie, caro. Grazie. Salute. Yes, salute a te, Gino. Usually they give you the Aperol spritz. We're on the Amalfi Coast, Gino, so <laughs> we've the... taken out the Aperol and we've put in the Limoncello. Limoncello is the lemon-flavored liqueur that hails from this area. Oh, that's, yeah, really get the lemon in and the limoncello. Get yeah, first the lemon in and then the alcohol. Oh. While we sip our spritz, Lisa tells me how this became the number one place to visit. Positano became super cool immediately after the war because lots of famous people came here, artists, painters, Picasso, famous actors like Sofia Loren or Jacqueline yeah. Kennedy. To find a quiet to place. To find a quiet place. Because you could live here, not being noticed. If I wanted to buy a house here in Positano, can I do that? Or do you need to be a resident? No. How does it work? It costs a lot, but you can. Round about 8,000 euro per square metre. You would say this is the ultimate exclusive place to buy a property. It is. Piacere. Salute. Ciao. As much as I'm enjoying the spritz, the best way to really appreciate this coastline is to charter a boat from Amalfi Town itself and head to open blue water. This coast is listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's an outstanding example of a Mediterranean landscape. Lisa, what do you think makes this place so popular? I think it's the very distinct look. I mean, all those colors, the way the houses are built in the rock. If you look at it, everything looks put in a certain place, studied, but it's not. It's just being built because where they found space, that's where they built the houses. And if you look, you can see the top of the church has a Moorish influence. So all the colors, the green, the yellow, the blue, makes it really, really elegant. Do you think that the food has got something to do with it? Yes, we have the lemons, we have the anchovies, we have the olive oil, we have some excellent wines. Tomatoes. Tomatoes, which, of unbelievable. course. Fresh basil. Wonderful, yeah, mozzarella. inland. Mozzarella. So the food is excellent. 
Simple ingredients define Italian cooking, and these Amalfi ingredients are full of flavor. A dish that shows them off is a caprese salad, and it's also very special to me. The last time I saw my dad, before he passed away, we both ordered a caprese salad. So I'm going to dedicate this uh, uh, beautiful salad to my dad. Hi, daddy. And uh, uh, look, if I can do this on a sailing boat, as I'm sailing, you should be able to do this at home. It's very simple. And to make a caprese salad, you must get the right ingredients. These are the kind of tomato I'm looking for. These are called San Marzano, which you can get in the UK. Roughly cut them into a large bowl. Just cut them like that, look. Like that, beautiful. That's it. Now, let's talk about the mozzarella. I'm just gonna make a cut. Look at the amount of milk that comes out of a mozzarella. When you see that kind of milk, you know that you have a good buffalo mozzarella. For me, this is the perfect starter to any Italian meal. Always stir basil to maximize its flavor. This is gonna give the beautiful aniseed flavor that the basil gives into the salad. Good quality extra virgin olive oil. Drizzle goes in. I then season to taste. Mix and ecco qua. A simple yet flavorful salad. Lisa, come on, bring the glasses. I've got a bottle of Prosecco, which it should be nice and chilled. Oh, yes. Salute. That's it. Prosecco is ideally suited rather than wine, as the feast complements the creaminess of the mozzarella cheese. Nothing better than a cold glass of Prosecco in the sunshine with a nice caprese salad. As a keen sailor, I love drifting along this coast. But I want to show you an unexpected side to this coastline. One second. I'm not actually uh, sailing. I'm just, not... I'm just pretending. You, you eat this up. But it looks good on camera. So back on dry land, I head east to another seaside gem. Two and a half miles along the coast from Amalfi is the small but stunning town of Minori. Now, let me give you a tip about this beautiful little town of Minori. I used to come here when I was at Catering College, and just around the corner, you have the town of Amalfi, Positano, Sorrento, you know, all those glamorous towns that everybody knows about it. In my opinion, this is as good as, and trust me guys, it's definitely less expensive. This tiny town, not even one square mile, is home to just under 3,000 people. It's a great example of a place that's held its traditions dear, as it's celebrated as the birthplace for fresh pasta. One Minori family still produces the town's local speciality, a unique handmade pasta using ricotta cheese. So I'm in Claudia's kitchen to get a masterclass in making the delightfully named dunderi. Okay, dunderi. Should we do Let's them? do this. So here I've got 400 grams of ricotta and I'm putting obviously... So yes. Grazie. Bit of pepper. Now this is to taste. And See? then I put a pinch of salt. Yeah. And then 15 grams of Parmesan cheese. Parmesan cheese, 400 grams of ricotta cheese. Nutmeg. To taste. To taste. Everything is to taste. Si. Everything is certo. to taste. Very willy-nilly, as we say uh, uh, in English, right? What do you say in English? Willy-nilly. 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 You must be familiar with willy. And nilly is... Willy? You know that nutmeg is a fruit is here, don't you? Is That's it? enough. Uh, the flour is 30 grams per 100 grams of ricotta. So you're using a wooden spoon. My grandmother used to say to me, the least you move it around and the fluffier it's going to be. So if you use the back of the spoon, uh -huh, it's easier. Uh -huh. I didn't know that. I've learned something new today. What we're doing is just making gnocchi. By instead of using potato, we're using ricotta. Exactly, yes, exactly. And you should have said that at the beginning. Can I try? You have to. In the raw stage, it's already delicious. 
Can you get a couple of forks, please? This one? <laughs> yes, please. Okay, I'm going to give you some options. There you go. Of course, I like this one. It's another thing I love about Italian draws. When you're looking for cutlery, they're never the same. <laughs> uh, there must have been 22 different uh, kind of forks, and I love that. We're going to roll them in a fork, right? Yes. But I guess you can cook them like this. You can eat them like this, but if you roll them yeah. like that, you so, get the sauce inside. So the, what are you looking for is the dense of the fork, which the sauce is going to stick on it, yes. but also the, the hole in the back, so then the sauce stays it in, there. in there. Claudia? See? Si? I go cooking today. Okay. So you carry on with your dundere. I will. Look at that. Beautiful dundere. Meravigliosi. Mm -hmm. Grazie, bella. Ciao. So now I go my dundere. I think it's only fair to make sure that the sauce I'm going to prepare with the dundere is nice and light. I want the dundere to be the star for this dish. My sauce is a simple vegetable one to complement the dundere. But don't worry, if you want to recreate this dish, the gnocchi is the perfect replacement. So first, dice two courgettes into small, even-sized cubes. Slice two red peppers in exactly the same way. Job done. You will see, give or take, the same dice. Then heat up some olive oil, making sure it's nice and hot. Before you put all the vegetables in the oil, let me give you a little tip. Just pick one little courgettes and put it in. If you see that it starts to sizzle, the oil is ready. Definitely start to sizzle. Now, get everything together, straight in. Add a generous pinch of salt. You probably want to cook this one for about 10, 12 minutes, okay? Do the first seven, eight minutes, then we're gonna start to add the sage. Finally slice the sage and add in when the veg has softened, after about seven minutes. And a big knob of butter. The butter is going to make the sauce nice and creamy. Mix all together, switch off the heat. Now we're ready to cook the dundere. In a large pan of boiling salted water, add in the dundere. As soon as they come up, give another two to three minutes to cook, and the job is done. The sauce is nice. My dundere are perfectly cooked. And it's very important that we now mix the dundere and the sauce together, because what I wanted to show you, I wanted to show you what Claudia told me. I want the courgettes, the peppers, the sage to go on the straps of the dundere and inside the hole. Put it back on a high heat and stir for around a minute. Just like that. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of black pepper. Now look at that, all the crispy peppers and the courgettes, they're going all the way inside that hole of the dundere. And finish with some freshly grated Parmesan cheese. That's it. Where is Claudia? Claudia! Vini, come in. Vini, 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 come in, come in. As for you, mm. and I think you're absolutely right. It's important to do the holes in there, so then all the sauce goes in there. Oh, woman! Well, huh? mm. mm. Do you I'm... think it works well with the courgette and the know. peppers? I'll tell you when it's finished. <laughs> I'll take that as a yes then. With this mouth-watering pasta and the breathtaking seaside towns. My Amalfi coastal experience is shaping up nicely, and there is so much more to come. Tonight, I'm guiding you through the Amalfi coast, visiting seaside towns and uncovering its food traditions as only the locals know them. It's a place that celebrates its history and is captivatingly beautiful. And my next destination will not disappoint. It's the picturesque fishing village of Cetara. This is one place that I didn't visit when I was a little boy. And I'm really excited because to me this little town is food heaven. Seven miles away from Minori, Cetara 
is at the eastern end of the Amalfi Coast, home to just over 2,000 people. Fishing is at the heart of this tiny community and is made a name for itself, producing Collatura di Alici, an anchovy oil made from the natural process of salting anchovies. This was the ancient Romans' favorite condiment, and it's still a staple found in every Italian's kitchen. I know what you're thinking, uh, anchovy oil. Trust me, this will change the way you cook. And the first thing you need, oh yes, is anchovies. And catching these tiny fish happens after dusk, when they are attracted to the surface of the water by moonlight. So, as night falls, I hop on board Fisherman Domenico's boat for an evening under the stars. Domenico uses modern sonar technology to track the anchovies and then relies on a centuries-old way of fishing to land a catch. So the small boat goes in and they're going to put the light into the water to attract the anchovy. These fishermen have a window of just four months between March and July when these waters are rich in anchovies. In one trip, they can haul up to 2,000 kilos of anchovies, which can net them up to 6,500 pounds. So they got the two little boats with the lights shining to the water so the anchovies get all excited. The nets goes underneath, and with a little bit of luck, we're going to pick them up. I really hope so. Domenico's nets are dropped to depths of 100 meters, and the crew then use their years of expertise to decide when to haul the nets back up. Simple. I can see anchovies, I can see anchovies. One successful catch. We got anchovies! And for these fishermen, the night is only just beginning. But for me, well, my job is to make sure this catch goes to the anchovy oil factory in Cetara in the morning. After a good night's sleep, I'm clocking in with oil producer Gennaro. His anchovy oil is still made using a 1,000-year-old recipe. The anchovies are cleaned by hand and placed in wooden barrels within layers of salt. They put stones on top. The weight allows the water and the oil to separate from the anchovies and this process takes 18 months. It's a little bit like wine. You just need to be patient, take your time, and eventually the flavor comes together. Voilà. I can see already some drip. Okay. Pronto? Si. Va. Fantastic. Now you... Gino, devi provare. Una goccia. So, literally, it lets me try one drop. Not a teaspoon or anything, just one drop. Pronti? Yes. Mamma mia. Poor. Posso dirgli in dialetto? Adore mare, mocca te. You know, in a Neapolitan dialect, he told me exactly what I was feeling. Is slightly salty, but yet sweet. This is unique. Okay, please. Salute. 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 Yum, yum, yum. And with the sweet and salty anchovy dripping in hand, it's back to Cetara's beautiful harbor to create a dish that's a perfect starter. My twist on the classic Italian bruschetta. I'm going to use all local ingredients. I mean, my Amalfi lemons, then I'm going to use anchovies from Cetara, and the tuna from the sea behind me. I'm going to prepare a tuna tartare with anchovy dripping. Now, what we need to do, you get some nice plum tomato. I'm using San Marzano tomato, but make sure if you can find the San Marzano that they plum. Don't use the round one because they're too watery. 
Remove the pulp from the tomatoes, dice and place into a large bowl. For a little kick, I'm adding finely chopped red chilies. Then chopped spring onions, pitted black olives and capers. To balance the flavors, I'm adding some roughly chopped flat leaf parsley. My next ingredient, a typical cetara ingredient, anchovies in olive oil. Don't chop them too fine, because I want a little bit of texture. That's it, straight in. For my star ingredients, fresh tuna. I'm using the loin part of the tuna, but look at this. A little bit of fat going on, nice and sliced. This one, just roughly chop. If you cut them too much, they're gonna be all pulpy, the textures are gonna be good. Here, they're going to explode into your mouth. Now, like any Italian dressing, we keep it very simple. So, extra virgin goes in, like that. Then we're gonna pull the zest of a lemon. Fantastic. That's done. And straight away, the juice of half lemon. Don't be put off by the thoughts of eating raw fish. For me, this is the best way to try fresh tuna. Now, I don't know if you realize, but I haven't put any salt in the tuna tartare because remember, the anchovies are gonna be salty, the capers are salty, the olives are salty. No salt, just keep mixing and serve it straight away. Serve in chicory leaves, pile them with the tartare, and then arrange on a plate. Nice. And if you want to do a nice bruschetta for your aperitivo, the only thing you have to do, get a bit of ciabatta. Grab a little bit of olive oil on the griddle pan so it's gonna be nice and crispy. But my tip is this, get a garlic clove, peel it, and gently rub it on the bread. This is going to give you an extra kick. Pile the tuna tartare on top. Now for my secret ingredient, just before you serve it, anchovy dripping. That's it. And I'm gonna serve this one with white wine called Furore Bianco from the Amalfi Coast. Fruity and floral, which is gonna complement the tuna. Fantastico. From sea to plate, this superb starter sums up the spectacular simplicity of Amalfi Coast cuisine. Salute. Next time, I explore the sweet side of Sorrento. Not having the delizia limone is like going to Ireland and not trying Guinness. Set sail for Capri, you're gonna have to arrive in style. And serve up a dish sweeter than me. Trust me, the best cake that you ever had. Capture the essence of Italy's beautiful coastline and learn to cook and eat like an Italian in no time with Gino's new cookbook, Gino's Italian Coastal Escape. Oh, I'm hungry now. Gino's back next week at 8 o'clock. In half an hour, there are more woes for Martin and Louisa and a consultation has catastrophic consequences. Doc Martin's at 9. And we're back to Corrie next.